Do-do-do. Oh. Of all the what's going on videos, I honestly think this is the most important. And by the way, I never monetize these videos, so I'm not making a dime off of them. And secondly, I like to point out the fact, which I've pointed out many, many times, is that I am not a doom and gloomer. Yeah? There are a lot of YouTube channels that capitalize off of, oh, God, the world's going to end tomorrow or next week or next month. And I can't stand stuff like that. I really cannot. Can't stand it at all, in fact. Um, everybody should actually pay attention to this, and you can look this stuff up for yourself. You don't have to take my word on anything on this. I'd like to get to the other points after the most important section here. And I'd like to quote you some experts on the ground. I don't know if you know what's happening in Sri Lanka. It's like, ah, oh, who cares about Sri Lanka? Listen, if you're in Europe especially, especially the Netherlands, you know what's going on in the Netherlands, right? If you're in the Netherlands, you're the Dutch, you know what's going on? You should really, really pay attention. Some people say, oh, they've mentioned what's happening in the Netherlands on a, a few news networks lately, and, you know, they've finally mentioned it. Well, something that uh, none of them have mentioned on this front, and this is just absolutely incredible. So I'm going to talk about Sri Lanka, but if you're in Europe or the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Germany, you really should pay attention. You know that old adage about a canary in the coal mine? I don't know if you know what it's about. It's like people go in a coal mine, they bring a little canary in a cage, and, you know, if the canary kicks it over, it's like, hey, we need to get out of the coal mine. It's the old uh, thing about the canary. Well, Sri Lanka is a canary in a coal mine, and Sri Lanka has imploded, and I'd like to tell you why what has happened in Sri Lanka bodes impending doom for the Netherlands, and much of the rest of Europe that's adopting this, and it'd be undeniable 100%. Well, what would the Netherlands have to do with Sri Lanka? Superficially, anybody would think that. So let's get uh, right to it, okay? I don't know if you know what an ESG is. Talk about it in a second. Um, by the way, uh, right now Sri Lanka, and you can look this up, don't take my word for it, is basically imploded. Um, other than getting uh, some emergency food and fuel from India... Sri Lanka would have literally flat out imploded. Right now, everybody's in agreement that Sri Lanka is in an abysmal freefall. People are scrounging for food, scrounging for fuel. There's a huge medicine shortage. Whether that's going to be abated anytime in the very near future, that I don't know. I'm not going to speculate about that. But what's happened to Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka adopted something that the folks in the Netherlands have been protesting about. So Sri Lanka's running out of fuel and facing the worst economic uh, crisis um, in its uh, history. Well, actually, I think uh, since the uh, massive fuel crisis back since the 70s. Anyway, chemical fertilizer uh, ban in 2021, part of an initiative. Doesn't it sound like something similar? Yeah, it sounds exactly the same in the Netherlands. A uh, part of an initiative to cut nitrogen. Hello, Netherlands, and much of the rest of Europe that is adopting this insanity. Um, waste has been implemented to make a greener farming practices. And I'm going to quote some people here. On the ground in Sri Lanka, live their whole life there. You tell me, I'm not interested in my opinion. I'm interested in facts, logic, and wisdom. Implemented a greening, uh, greener farming practices, drastically reduced crop yields, and damaged the Sri Lanka's trade balance. By the way, when I was younger... I had this uh, fascination with Sri Lanka, especially the gems, the rubies, and the sapphires, and I was very, very interested in Sri Lanka. I had an unnatural, I don't know, a natural, but a fascination with Sri Lanka. I did a lot of studying on Sri Lanka, not that that's important here. Um, anyway, the decision overnight to shift away from synthetic fertilizers was an absolute disaster, economist uh, Paul Eri told the Daily Caller New Foundation. Um, environmental Min uh, Minister uh, Mahendra Am uh, Amawira declared a government initiative to save the earth from our own geoengineering misuse, greed and selfishness. This is the whole green agenda. In 2020, ahead of a forum on uh, having nitrogen waste, <coughs> hello, Netherlands. And by the way, I've been told by many Europeans that the same thing that's going on in the Netherlands is, is rising in scale in Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, many other European countries, to having nitrogen waste. Gee, this sounds exactly like what's happening... 
Trust me, Sri Lanka is the canary in the coal mine. The folks in the Netherlands need to pay attention. The move was part of Sri Lanka's efforts to persuade. This is where ESG comes from. It's actually a quotient. I think Sri Lanka ranks 98 percentile on ESG, environmental, social, and governance. ESG. And this is some fancy uh, woke speak, actually, is what this means. ESG is a, uh, an acronym. It basically means how green woke you are. Basically, that's what it means. Environmental social governments. ESG score goals. The country signed on to a green finance taxonomy with the International Finance Corporation in May that included a commitment to organic fertilizers. Sri Lanka has been racked with poverty, inflation, and fuel shortages on a massive scale. There is an economic and fuel and food and medicine crisis with the Prime Minister declaring Tuesday that the country had gone bankrupt, according to Business Insider. A ban on chemical fertilizers implemented in April 2021. Gee, that was about a year ago, right? Only took a year for it to destroy Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is the, the, uh, the canary in the coal mine. Are you listening, Netherlands and Europe and Canada and the United States? Um, in an effort to promote organic farming and proved the final straw after a string of mishaps, decimating Sri Lanka's primary source of income and forcing it into bankruptcy, the experts told the Daily Caller News Foundation. <clears throat> Let's, let me continue here. Here's a quote uh, from uh, W.M. Sivaratni. Sivaratni. And I cannot recall any time in the past when we had to struggle so much to get a decent harvest. A lean 65-year-old with a shock of silver hair who has been farming since he was a child. Last year, we got 60 bags of food from these two acres. But this time, it was just 10, uh, 10 bags, uh, he added. Uh, the dramatic fall in yields follows a decision last, last April uh, by President uh, Gotabaya Raja, uh, Raja, uh, yeah, isn't it? Raja Paksa, yeah, uh, Gotabaya Raja Paksa to ban all chemical fertilizers in Sri Lanka. There's this whole nitrogen issue, uh, green woke. Yeah, I crossed my eyes when I said green woke. Uh, move the risks undermining the support among rural voters of the key family grip in Sri Lankan pot. Anyway, the president or prime minister of Sri Lanka, he resigned, I think, was it two days ago? They stormed his uh, residency. They completely overtook it. You can see countless videos and images of thousands and thousands and th tens of thousands, looks like, people storming um, the capital of uh, Sri Lanka. Um, we are a tropical country full of uh, rice paddies and banana plantations, but because of this stupid fertilizer ban, now we don't even have enough food to feed ourselves, says Rajith uh, uh, Kirthi uh, uh, Tinakun, 52 years of age, former governor of the southern province. We've had past economic crisis, security crisis, but never in Sri Lanka's history have we had a food crisis. Not only is it a food crisis, there's a fuel crisis, there's a problem getting medicine. So Sri Lanka has literally imploded, and it would have imploded and blown away like dust in the wind if it were not for uh, help from India and a float of a loan, I think, uh, from uh, the EU to Sri Lanka. Uh, unbelievable. So, And I also, too, have been told by a lot of Europeans what's going on in the Netherlands, also, too, happening in Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, and some other European countries. Also, too, there's a huge, tons of Germans have been emailing me and direct messaging me, telling me about uh, this... Uh, Nasty. I didn't know that power had gone up so drastically in Germany, too, by the way. This horrific, there's a severe energy crisis in Germany right now. Germany is rationing hot water, turning off the lights to reduce natural gas and consumption. Let me look at a couple headlines. Yeah, Germany rationing hot water, dimming street lights, and closing pools as energy crisis hits. Gas pipeline shut down as Germany works to cut ties with... Now, Germany was uh, Deutschland, good old Deutschland, was warned about this a few years ago by somebody whose name I won't mention, saying Germany needs to uh, unlatch itself... Um, from the uh, brown protuberance of Russia, yeah, which they were Germany was warned about uh, taking in energy excessive energy from Russia. They were warned. It's not my opinion. It's a fact. I had no idea this was this bad. You know, some bunch of Germans who told me how horrible the price of uh, energy has gotten in euros per megawatt hour from May 1920 uh, from May 2020. 
it's gone from 17 euros per megawatt hour to 250. It's since slumped down a little bit. Now it's at 177. So since May of 2020, it's gone from 17 euros per megawatt hour to 250. What percentage of increase is that? That's unbelievable. So Germany, um, also to a bunch of Germans, how accurate this, I don't know, but Germans themselves, Deutschlanders themselves, have told me that there is a full-on crisis, something that they're going to go into full, you know, run around, uh, you know, like your head's cut off, like a chicken with its head cut off, crisis mode within a roughly two-week period of time in Germany. It's that bad. This is from the words of the mouths of the Germans. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Either the Germans themselves telling me this fact. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, by the way, I don't know what you think about this one way or not, uh, but I've had, I've never had so many people from a certain country email me all at once, but enormous amounts of Canadians have texted me and emailed me saying that Canada is in full-on, flat-out, 100% tyranny mode. Um, here is a comment that I got from a Canadian that I know he's been commenting for years. And this is very reminiscent of countless other Canadian commenters, or mostly emails, actually. I've received a lot of comments on it. Uh, like everyone else here in Canada, food has exploded upwards, gas is around 9.50 gallons. So during the COVID protests, the Trudeau government would not even meet with any protesters, then lied about the police asking for help, declaring an emergency all by himself, a proven fact now, he froze bank accounts. We all know this part. Um, Canadians are not allowed to travel in their own country if they've not been fully juiced. Or uh, they, they can if they're driving, obviously, but just as far as government rail and, uh, and uh, whatnot. I think that's actually been lifted not too long ago, however. Uh, our government official stated here that there's absolutely no right to property in Canada. Um, even to this day, if you go to the United States for even a few hours, misuse a government app outlying info for the border guards to scrutinize, or you could be fined 5,000 bucks. This once proud country is now the laughing stock of the world and forced, and uh, excuse me, as forced is how the uh, current uh, Trudeau government rules. Uh, creating a kind of coup to lead us to your program. Healthcare, healthcare is disaster mode, many emergency hospitals closing. Their emergency rooms, this has been brewing for several decades, and now it's a serious prop, uh, problem for the population here. Mainly people are afraid to move because if they have their doctor now, they will never get another doctor in their new residence, and so we'll try to use an emergency room if open. Many people are leaving Canada as they see this is a hopeless situation here. It's getting no better. We're in serious trouble in Canada with the current government, politics, Canadian pastors. I don't care about politics, but I don't care if you like me, hate me. I'm telling you flat out, an enormous amount of Canadians have emailed me that it's gotten bad, 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 bad in Canada. As to what level? Well, you know, I just let the Canadians speak for themselves, and I'm telling you what they have told me. And nobody's reporting on it down here, absolutely nobody whatsoever. Um, here's a couple other things that I'd like to uh, mention. Um, this whole uh, defund the cops evil nonsense, which is actually not being reported on anymore, but is still going on. There's a very clear video of this. You could just uh, uh, do a Google search, type in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, kids and traffic cone. Very, very cle clear video. And of course, this is anecdotal, but it's happening more and more. It's getting more dramatic as uh, the thugs and the criminals and the evil people of the world are in no fear whatsoever. There's these t uh, young teens. There's actually, uh, some of them are preteen. I have an average between 10-year-old and 13-year-old. No, like, mid-teens or late teens. Young, young, young teens. There's, like, about a dozen of them. They take turns using one of those, you know, four or three or four-foot-tall uh, squishy plastic traffic cones and beating an old poor man to death. So there's, like, a dozen of them, roughly. They're taking turns with the traffic cone. They beat the poor old man to death. For what reason? Just for gits and shiggles, just, just for the hell of it. So they, they beat the old man to death. These, these are 10, 11, 12, 13 year old kids. Um, Kim Glass is a, a, an American Olympian. She was trying to make her way through the subway and uh, 
they uh, broke her orbital socket and they nearly put her eye out and she's got this horrible gash and she's a very very beautiful woman she's an olympian her name is kim glass there's all this woke move to uh, release criminals and not let them serve any time also to that bodega owner in new york city it's absolutely horrific if it wasn't for the outcry of public the guy'd still be in rikers island um you heard about that one where the uh, the chick her uh, government issued uh, card uh, wouldn't uh, pan out for a two dollar bag of potato chips she invited her boyfriend back and had beaten up an old man he's an old man with a gray beard he's like 61 years old he's the one of course he ended up defending himself and the video proves 100 percent self-defense self-defense is an absolute inalienable right uh, now i'm remiss to use the word god-giving right but it is it's the most natural right granted to any living being on earth self-defense so he did fight back and he did uh, end uh, the attacker that was beaten up on the old man i think he used a well i don't want to say the, the 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 knife that he used but anyway he defended himself and in the process of doing so uh, you know he, he killed his attacker this crime keeps escalating out of control chicago is completely off the hook um I used to live in uh, California with my wife. When did we leave? 2003 or something like that? It was horrible back then. I can't imagine anybody wanting to live there. I mean, California, many parts of it are absolutely beautiful, meaning uh, the scenery and the wildlife, but the state is just, it's just an imploded uh, Satan's armpit. I mean, it is. It's just Satan's jockstrap. I hate to say that, but it is, and uh, this is why I scoff and roll my eyes at all these people that think they're so much more intelligent. Oh, you dumb Southerners. It's like, you know the people that keep, you know, electing these horrible people that wrecking your state? Chicago, Illinois, New York, California, I don't want to name any names. You, you know, you, you keep... You, you keep praising the people that are wrecking your own uh, uh, state. And you, keep, you, call, <laughs> you call Southerners ignorant and stupid? I'm not interested in a, you know, a turf conflict with uh, you know, the insanity of California, uh, Illinois, New York, and New Jersey. But you know, I really roll my eyes at their idea of superiority. They're, not su they're just the opposite of superior. Um, as is the case, these people are moving out in droves. Nobody's moving from Florida or Kentucky to California. Just the opposite. All of a sudden, I see California license plates everywhere here, Lexi. Because people are getting the, people with a half a brain have already gotten the heck out of these horrible places. There's going to be a mass migration in the United States. I don't know if you're aware of it or not. Look up the water levels of Lake Mead. Lake Mead, of course, is the water source and the power source for much of Las Vegas and many surrounding areas. Uh, once the water is already dangerously super low, if it actually gets a whole lot lower, it'll force Lake Mead to stop producing power. I don't know if you know it or not, but it takes an awful lot of power to power air conditioners in Las Vegas, which is about two inches away from, you know, uh, Satan's jockstrap. Yeah, Las, uh, <laughs> Las Vegas is about two inches away from Sa Satan's jockstrap. It's that hot. And it requires an enormous amount of power to power all those air conditioners in the middle of that, you know, uh, despicable wasteland. And if Lake Mead stops producing power because its power level is already, its water levels are already so incredibly low, I mean, that's a real problem. You're going to see mass migration from the west to the east and the south. I hope that doesn't happen. We kind of don't want those people out here. <laughs> stay out in the west. You know, stay out in the west. You know, you're good at wrecking your own your own uh, states out there in the West, stay out there, you know? Continue to wreck it. Don't come out here and wreck ours. Um, but anyway, the canary in the coal mine. Netherlands, I hope you're paying attention to what's happened in Sri Lanka. The only reason Sri Lanka is literally not on fire, I don't mean that super literally, but essentially literally. The only reason Sri Lanka is literally not on fire and blown away like dust in the wind is because of India sending over a f a food, fuel, and uh, medicine. The whole country's bankrupt. The whole place is literally imploded because of the same things that the farmers in the Netherlands are protesting against. 
Sri Lanka is the canary in the coal mine. In the Netherlands and these other European countries, I hope you're paying attention because it's coming to you. It wrecked Sri Lanka in basically a year. ESG, environmental social governance. Green woke. Woke green, green woke, which would be perfect. Green woke. Absolutely unbelievable. So the whole country of Sri Lanka is imploded for the very things that the Netherlands farmers are protesting against right now. Are you paying attention, Netherlands? Do you know that Netherlands is the second uh, biggest exporter of food in the entire world, not Ukraine? Second is the Netherlands. And yet the Netherlands... If you want to talk about a food crisis, a looming, flat-out, no tinfoil hat, no conspiracy theory, wackadoodle nonsense, hardcore, flat-out food crisis, Sri Lanka has proven what is coming. Something wicked this way comes. You remember that line? Something wicked this way comes? Nobody is paying attention. Well, Sri Lanka, who cares about them? It's a little tiny island country off the coast of India. Who cares? <laughs> what destroyed them was the very same thing that the, the Dutch farmers are protesting against. And it's not just the Netherlands that is implementing that stuff. Germany's doing it. Ge By the way, what, what's going to happen to Germany? There's, all these Germans have told me that Germany's basically got two weeks before they start running around like chickens with their heads cut off in circles from a, a full-on... No ifs, ands, or buts, energy crisis. How are they going to solve that? Yeah, because Russia has turned off the spigot. All right, I read every comment. Tell me what you think. I'm an information sponge. I read every comment. I hope you're paying attention, and I don't tell anybody what to do, but if you're not stockpiling non-perishable food, you are making a mistake. Give yourself a buffer. You know what a buffer is? Yeah. Buffer is like a uh, smoke alarm, fire extinguisher, seat belt, a, uh, f a full frontal impact airbag. You know, a buffer to protect yourself from disaster. Yeah. Stockpiling some non-perishable foods is your uh, airbag. Your airbag for life, for what is coming. Because absolutely every indication says it's coming. Absolutely everyone. And that ain't no tinfoil hat nonsense talking either. So, uh, The world has gone to hell in a handbasket. Everybody's lost their damn minds and the world has gone to hell. <laughs>